Welcome back to the channel. I have spent an entire week driving this 2023 Genesis GV70 electrified, and I can tell you right away, it is the definition of electrified luxury. So starting off as usual, we're gonna take a look at the front. First, we're gonna start with these daytime running LEDs. If you're thinking this looks familiar to the gas version, well, that's because it is. It's because Genesis have been very proud of the fact that they've taken their gas version and modified it to be an electric version without modifying too much of the style styling, which to me is really cool. Now let's move on to the front grille and look at this. We get a close up here of this nice Genesis logo. I love that. Front grille is really big, very EV like, but they do, it does have a purpose this time. We have a front facing camera right dead center there, but also we have this little hidden compartment here that is for your charge port. This is for your normal charging. This is for your DC stuff. Very good, but it's hidden, perfectly hidden as well. Then we do have some actual usable vents right down here as well as a little cooler you can see that is shut right now because the battery is not needing any air but when it does those little vents right back in there will actually open up and you will get some air to your battery and as well we have a bunch of sensors but overall it's a really great looking front end there also is a front trunk, but it is extremely small, and I don't think anybody's gonna use it, but hey, it is there. Think Ionic 5 space-wise, that's how much trunks, front trunk space we have up in the front, but it, at least it's there, right? So now let's get to the specs for this Genesis GV70. We have a motor in the front as well as a motor in the back to make it the all-wheel drive system work. We're also dealing with a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery that's good for around 383 kilometers of range. So now the base horsepower for this thing is 429 horsepower, but it does have that ultra fun boost button, which you'll see in the POV driving. And that's gonna give us 483 horsepower, 516 pound-feet of torque. You get a little bit of extra horsepower for about 10 seconds with that boost button, which is really cool. So now let's quickly look at the charging. This GV70 can charge from 10 to 80% in 18 minutes using a very high output DC fast charger, which you're gonna, you're gonna wanna look for a 350 kilowatt output charger to do it. And I would definitely recommend doing that or getting a EV duty charger at home, something level two, because it will make your life a lot Lot easier when it comes to charging. You definitely don't want to rely on that wall plug because I think it took me probably around the six to three hour mark to get from 90 to 100% in this thing. So it is very slow with just your normal wall outlet stuff. So now we're going to move on here to the side of the Genesis GV70. And from the side, it really just looks like the normal Genesis GV70. I mean, I don't really see too much of a difference. And I mean, it was the same thing from the front too, but I like the color here. It does look a little bit more blue on camera, a little bit darker in person, but no bother because it is such a clean design. Looks exactly like how a luxury SUV should look, except this one's just electric. So we have some nice rims there with the white Genesis brake pads. I'll give you a little close up on those. Check that out. I love that. It matches perfectly with the color of the car. Then we have a little 360 degree camera right here so that you can see the curb and all that stuff. We have a little sensor here. Not sure if that's going to freeze in the winter or not, but it is there for the lock and unlock feature. And then we have the nice rear door, little blind spot window there. Kind of looks a little bit awkward, but I do like the chrome and I like everything that there is about the side profile. So let's move on to the back. So last but not least, we're taking a look at that back where you can see these tail lights they wrap right around uh you know on the back there the, the gv70 logo the genesis logo there's no all-wheel drive logo but it is all-wheel drive it only comes in one trim it's eighty four thousand dollars for this bad boy so you're going to get a lot of stuff with it but you're gonna pay for every single piece of it so i like the light bar that they have up here too it's really nice really clean super well done it's on the outside of the vehicle which i like and then this is kind of the biggest difference, right? This is kind of how you tell the two apart. I can tell that this is not the GV70 gas powered because there's no exhaust. So you can tell me, do you prefer to have the exhaust down here or do you find that the electric vehicle looks way better? I think maybe with the exhaust, it adds a little bit more personality and without it, it just looks a little bit boring out here in the back, but I'll leave the opinions up to you guys on this one. So last but not least, let's look at the trunk. So you normally think that the trunk button is down here, but that's actually where the camera is. The trunk button is right here, perfectly hidden. Nice to the rear wiper there too. Opens automatically, of course, because why else would it open anywhere else? That's where you're gonna find your charger. We do have a little bit of storage down here underneath, which is good. The floor kind of lifts up and moves so you can have a little bit more storage vertically, but there is so much space back here in this trunk. It's just incredible. The whole car is very well done, but let's take a look at the back seat, then the front seat, and then of course the POV drive. Let's get right into that. Okay, let's start off with checking out the back seat. 
Genesis GV70. Let's sit in here. Genesis was very big on the fact that they managed to fit a full electric motor and not take up any more space than the gas powered. So that's really cool. And they've done a great job. I'm, you know, perfectly sitting in here. They've got like these kind of cutouts almost for your knees in the back seat here. A little bit of a storage thing here. You got some nice shades there for the sun. This here lights up at night and you can kind of see it already because it's a little bit dark. So this lights up with the ambient lighting looks really good. Good shot of like the felt headliner and all that stuff. The seats overall, of course, the white looks incredible. The white looks very clean, but obviously it is going to be a challenge to keep it clean. Nice little holder here too. We do have a nice little moon roof in here, which is nicely tinted. So enough light gets in, but you're also not sweating. And then we also have some HVAC controls so I can turn it on by just kind of rotating the dial. You know, you can adjust your fan speed back here and you also have two heated seat buttons and the direction of everything. So that's really cool. Turn that off. Then just below it, we have some two USB ports right down there as well. So very comfortable, very, very luxurious back here. And also if you are being driven in this car, well, we can take a look over here and we have the seat controls here. So the person in this seat can actually control the passenger seat and I can move it up and give myself even more leg room with this thing all the way up. So now with that out of the way, let's take a look up front. Okay, next up is the front seat of the GV70. Look at this, all nice white door trim here with some memory seat settings, as well as the mirror controls. It's all quality and you can see the nice mix of white and black there. Really good materials here. Really nice closed sound. I'm very satisfied with that. Very nice to hear. And then we're just greeted by this nice white steering wheel. So if your hands are dirty, definitely going to show on that. There is no way to avoid it. But it is very nice to feel. We got paddles here for the regen braking. We have some durable volume controls, cruise control controls, and we also have a boost button, which is gonna give us a lot of a little bit of boost of horsepower for about 10 seconds. And you'll see that when we take it for a drive, I'm gonna press it a few times and go crazy. So left-hand side as well, we have some illumination, traction control off, hill descent climb, the automatic button for the whole parking brake and all that stuff. And then we can move on to the really cool part, which is the digital gauge cluster. So it's all digital looks really nice, is super speedy. Like you can see when I switch between my sport, my comfort, my eco, like it's so fast, the response. Sometimes we don't always see that from, we'll say Hyundai products. This is the high-end Hyundai. It's not to try to hide that, but it is very nice because you can't see it on the camera, probably isn't coming out, but it is a 3D gauge cluster screen. So it kind of pops out for my eyes. For you guys, you're probably not gonna see that. You're gonna have to go in person and check it out. But I can assure you that it does kind of pop out. It's not aggressive, right? It doesn't hurt the eyes or anything like that, but you can kind of see it like come out a little bit depending on how you're looking at it. So it's really cool. I think most people will probably turn that off, but I left it on. And we move over to this nice infotainment screen, which is so good. I can also use this little dial down here as like a little touch slider or an actual knob, just like we see in some Cadillac models, but I love it here in the Genesis. Very good. Um, you know, we have a whole bunch of different menus, settings. I can control the seats. I can control the climate. I can, you know, access my terrain modes and I can also control the lighting in here. And then we have the EV thing. And this is kind of the only way you actually can see your battery percentage. Like you can see right now I'm at 94%. Kind of, you know, we saw it in the Ionic 5, Ionic 6. This is kind of the same menu where it just shows you your battery percentage and also how far a charger is. A little bit lower, just like we saw on the Palisade. Well, we have it here on the Genesis, a secondary screen just for the controls. It's very glossy. You can see my hands right through it. Um, but you have all your HVAC controls here. There's like some buttons down here, but none of them control HVAC, which I don't really hate this because it is a dedicated screen and you don't have to go into the touchscreen up there to do it. You know, I have everything here fully ventilated and heated seats for the two passengers, as well as heated seats. And you have your dual zone automatic climate control, which is really good. Bunch of buttons here. I like the quick access media stuff. So I'm in other menus. If I'm in the EV menu, I can go back to Apple CarPlay, no problem. So I do like the look of it. And this just looks crazy at nighttime. I'll put some shots in if I have them. Then we also have a 360 degree parking camera, which kind of renders the car like really well. I think it's a really good system, super high quality, exactly what you'd expect from the price point. So that's cool too. You got your drive mode buttons right down here, some volume controls, you know, the, the ones that are not on the steering wheel, they're right here, some menu controls, and you can control this. Then you have, it's not like the GV60 where it's like a crystal ball that rotates, but it is very nice and shiny. Does look cool at night as well. This is your gear selector. Then we have some storage in here, 
it's like nice felt material too. They obviously have the white, it's very cool. And then we get on to the seats. So the seats are really nice. Again, you can see the controls a little bit closer here for the guys at the rear, but very nice. The white comes out super nicely. I just don't have any complaints. This pillow here is very comfortable. This headrest is very comfortable. The liner, you can get a good shot of it. It's just very nice. I mean, it is more driver focused, which I like. And you know, it's, it's very easy to use. Everything in here is, is just, but everything in here feels very premium. I feel like I'm getting what I need out of this price point. It's $84,000 for the start. So I'm feeling what, like I, I'm getting a good price. And also you can shove your phone down there and then have it wireless charge, which is cool. This is where the USB comes from, cup holders, all that standard stuff. But let's take it where it matters. Let's take it on the road. Where we're going to take it for a rip, a test drive. I'll tell you everything it is, how it is to live with a week. And then we'll end off with some final thoughts, but let's get right to it. All right, so I've showed you the exterior. I've showed you the interior of the Genesis GV70 Electrified. Now we're on the road. You're in the driver's seat. You're right strapped to my forehead. So now we're going to have a good old time, and I'm going to talk about literally everything there is to speak about when it comes to driving this Genesis GV70. So I've had it for a week. It's pretty much my last day with it, and it has been just a great time to have the car, to just be around the car, you know, and just the driving experience in general has been good, like really solid. Like this is one of the top ride qualities that I've had all year, which is pretty impressive because I've driven quite a bit of cars this year. So ride quality is great. Steering feel is really good too, especially when you pop it into sport mode. And of course it's an absolute bullet. I told you how much horsepower it had at the beginning and it definitely doesn't disappoint in the horsepower sector. So what we'll do is I will pop it into sport mode that and you can see how fast these gauge clusters change it's so quick usually on some vehicles it's quite slow or the animation like the you know the system just can't handle all the animation that they wanted to do but this one it's so fast so you know just like the car the animations are also fast so we'll give it a little bit of brakes here we we'll kind of come to a little bit of a stop hopefully i don't have too much loose things in the car press the boost button and let's fly oh my god Ugh. Okay, I, I struggle to breathe when I do that. Like from, from a dig like that, it's just like the stomach, you know, your stomach just drops right into the seat. And it's like, oh my God, it's just so fast. And for, and for no good reason, because it's an SUV, you don't really need this kind of speed. But listen, if you want it, it's there. And, and it's, you know, things like that where this car really does hold up to the competition. Like Tesla Model Y would be probably its biggest competitor in this market. Like, you know, we're in the same price point, but I feel like just the Genesis offers a little bit more luxury wise. Like, whereas, you know, Tesla, you just kind of get a screen. There's nothing else. Yes, the ride quality is good. Sound system is obviously better than this one, but that's pretty much where it stops. And yes, the range is better on the Tesla too. But other than that, like this looks like a normal car. This gives you more luxurious stuff. So pretty nice. And I can also just floor it around this bend here. No problem. Look at this. No problem pretty much can go at any speed I want and it just holds it sticks obviously track control is always on in this thing because I'm afraid of what it would do to me in my neck if I turned it off so you know there you go and we also have regenerative braking so if I leave let my foot off the gas a little bit or the accelerator then you know it kind of puts that power back into the battery which is really cool too very nice to have and one pedal driving I love using it I know a lot of people don't like using it but I am a fan of it and I just like everything's laid out I can reach everything you know the paddles feel decent enough you know like so overall it's just a really solid car to drive obviously it uses a lot of battery the range is just not there that's like my biggest gripe with the car like my biggest complaint with Genesis GV70 is just the range is just like way lower than you would expect it to be. You would expect it to be way higher for the price you're paying and also considering the competition, considering that the lower tier vehicles be the Ionic 5 and the Ionic 6 can hit higher range, even the all wheel drive stuff. And this one just kind of feels like it's getting left behind a little bit when it should be more than those guys, or at least on par with them and then add all the luxury stuff on top of it. And especially if you wanna go after the Tesla market, everybody looks at range. So your range has to be there. And I just think it's just short, like it's almost there, but it's just short with the range. And you know, obviously the, the DC fast charging does help things because you're not gonna be sitting there forever. So yeah, that's why it makes me think about like road tripping the car. It's like, yes, comfort wise, I would definitely road trip this car, but maybe range range anxiety wise, I'd probably not do it. Cause like, it's got like, you know, it'll change lanes for me. It'll, 
you know, keep me in my lane. It's got all like the safety stuff that I could ever want for like a really long road trip. It's just that I feel like I'd have to stop way more than anyone would like to in order to get, you know, the, the amount of range that I would want. So that's the that's the problem but just for a daily driver for a grocery getter for you know a little bit of fun this car is an excellent ev choice if you have the budget for it that is kind of the main thing there you gotta have some deep pockets because this thing starts at eighty four thousand dollars and probably only goes up from there so you really gotta you really gotta have them deep so if you do though you'll be very happy because this is a really solid electric vehicle and it does keep with its competition in most of the fields. So that's good news. So overall, we'll do some final thoughts. So the final thoughts are great EV to own, easy to use, really fast, really comfortable, way more luxury than you could ever want or ask for or need. Great for road trips, other than the fact that you're gonna have a lot of range anxiety. Range is just not there, unfortunately. And you know, that is the biggest problem because I know that Genesis wants to keep up with a certain market but you're not gonna be able to do that until you can match that market's range. And the king is those guys right there, the Teslas. So hopefully they'll build on the platform. I think Genesis has only been doing this since like April, 2021. So they haven't been doing it long. And in the short time they have, they've kind of closed the gap enough to where they're, you know, pretty serious competition, but I think they can do a little bit more with their EV stuff. And if they do, they will have a great luxury option for the people that are looking for that and also a luxury SUV at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave things there. You let me know what you think of the comments. Do you like this one or do you prefer the gas one? You let me know. I think this one is the way to go because this is where the market is gonna trend at some point. I mean, good luck getting them because uh, you know EVs are probably about a one to two year wait list just to get them in your driveway. But if you can, and if you have the money to do so, I think you can't go wrong with the Genesis GV70 electrified. I'm going with that one over the gas one. So. That's gonna do it for today's video. Take care, I'll see you in the next week. See you in the next car, bye bye.